These towel toppers are unique in the fact that these shamrocks are not crocheted separately and then sewn on. They are made around the post of stitches. These are floating shamrocks. You don't have to do any sewing. You will need to have a button to sew on. This, the other unique thing about this towel topper is it has a hanging loop to hang your towel on so that when the towel gets dirty, all you do is switch out the towel. You don't have to throw the whole thing in the wash. I am using Red Heart Super Saver. I like the colors. I really liked how available the colors for the rainbow uh, shamrock towel topper were. I use cotton from time to time. You are welcome to use whatever yarn you would like. A worsted weight yarn is what will make this um, towel topper. I will be adding an addition. I will be putting an edge stitch around the hanging tab. Um, and again, just to look at that loop. Here's the hanging loop that is on the inside of the towel topper. Such a fun project. I was able to find this towel at the Dollar Tree and a white towel, just a plain white towel looks very nice. One of my friends suggested maybe crocheting a small pot of gold and putting off here in the corner. I think that's a great idea. Maybe I will do that next year. Let's get started. We will start with a hanging tab first. To crochet this towel topper, you will need an H crochet hook. Uh, you'll need a few markers. I generally don't use this mark type of marker. I don't like them very well. So let's get started with our worsted weight Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Again, you can use what is in your stash. It's a scrap busting. Uh, to, this is a scrap busting tutorial. So chain six and two single crochets in the second chain from the hook. A single crochet in the next three chains, one single crochet in the next three chains, and then two single crochets in this last chain. You have seven single crochets, chain one and turn single crochet in the first three single crochets, one single crochet in the first three single crochets, chain one, skip the stitch, and then single crochet in the last three stitches. You've just made an opening for the button. You've just made a buttonhole. Now chain one and turn single crochet in each stitch across. When you get to the chain one, just insert your hook underneath and single crochet. And you have seven single crochets. This is the beginning of the hanging tab. You will chain one and turn and single crochet in each stitch across for 22 rows. Let me finish that up and I'll meet you at the end of the 22nd row. So we are, okay, so we are at the end of row 22. We have a buttonhole down here and we're at the end. I want to put a marker in the first stitch and in this last stitch. And I'm going to turn slightly, chain one, and execute a ripple edge round around this hanging tab. And what the ripple edge round is, chain one, slip stitch in the next stitch. Now this chain one is generous, and because it's generous, it creates a bit of a little ripple. It just kinda shoves back and forth and just looks like a little ripple. 
I like this edge. I think this hanging tab needs an edge on it because these two corners are curling just a bit. So it's a simple process. Um, you can place a slip stitch in each row down, but you may want to skip a row or two as if you have too many stitches bunched onto the side, it will create another kind of ripple. It will uh, not lay smoothly. So just use your judgment. There's no hard and fast rule of how many stitches are needed. But let me speed the camera up and um, get to the corner and I'll meet you there. Okay, so I'm at the corner. This little edge kind of needs to be worked around. So I've chained one. I'm going to slip stitch in this stitch, chain one again and slip stitch in that exact same stitch. And now I'm ready to turn the corner and I will start executing my next slip stitches in that loop right there. So I will slip stitch in each loop across, chain one, Now I'm going to crochet over this yarn tail, chain one, and slip stitch, turning slightly, slip stitch into that stitch, chain one again, and slip stitch again in that exact same stitch. And that makes a nice turned edge. There we go. Let me continue on down the side while crocheting over top of this yarn tail. I don't normally crochet over a yarn tail, but this was already fixed in. This was my beginning. So let me speed up the camera and I'll meet you at, at the marker. I have finished the ripple stitch all the way around. So I'm ready to start round one. I placed a marker in this stitch so that it could be easily found. When I get to this point, I'll be placing two double crochets in the front loop of each stitch across, then turning the corner and placing two double crochets in the back loop of each stitch across. So when I get to the end of the ripple round or the ripple edge, I crochet two, chain two, excuse me, and execute two double crochets in the front loop only of each stitch across. So that will be 14 double crochets. Let me get to the edge. Let me speed up the camera. Okay, I'm at the last stitch and I'm glad I put the marker there or I could have easily felt like this was the last stitch, but it isn't. This is the last stitch. So two double crochets in the front loop only. Now I'm going to turn and execute. I have to dig that loop out of there. Yep, I pulled on it so I know it is part of this. See, I gave it a pull. Now two double crochets in the back loop only of each stitch around. I'm at the end and like, and as I turned the corner a moment ago, I need to dig out that little stitch that coordinates with these two double crochets. Now I'll join to the top of this double crochet. There we go. Now we have round one of the towel topper finished. Now we're going to fold this in half and place a marker on this opposite side. We're going to make the hanging loop now. We chain 20 or 18. 18 or 20, doesn't really matter. One. I chained 18. 
Now I'm going to go across and slip stitch into the marked stitch. Get the marker out of there. It's a slip stitch. There we have a hanging loop. Now we need to proceed, but we need to make sure that we're looking at the outside of the towel topper. We will chain two double crochet in the stitch where we joined the towel topper, and two double crochets in the next stitch. Double crochet in this next stitch, and two double crochets in the next stitch. That is the repeat all the way around. One double crochet in the this stitch and two double crochets in the next stitch all the way around and when we get back around we will join with a slip stitch. One more important thing to note is as you're increasing and going around make sure when you get to the hanging loop that you push it to the inside and crochet around it making sure that it isn't doesn't end up on the outside of your work. You want the hanging loop to be on the inside. So I've added the increases all the way around. The hanging loop is on the inside and I'm getting ready to join. And we are heading into round three. So let me join. I'm bypassing this chain two. Chain two does not count as a stitch. Slip stitch in the beginning. And then rows three and four, I will chain two, it will not count as a stitch. So I double crochet in the joining stitch and in each stitch around. Rows three and four is double crochet in each stitch around. Join with the slip stitch to the beginning, double crochet. Remembering that the chain two does not count as a stitch. And I will meet you at the end of round so four. I'm at the end of round four, I need to join with a slip stitch at the top of this double crochet, but I need to drop and cut the white, insert my hook, drop the white, and pull up the shamrock color that I'm wanting to use. And this shamrock color will be dark green. I could use light green, but I'm using the dark green. I'm going to go ahead, chain one and single crochet in this stitch just to secure everything. All right, but now I need to fold my towel topper in half. And I'm going to eyeball this. I'm not going to do a lot of counting. I'm going to just eyeball this. I need to put a marker in the very center. I'm going to use my buttonhole, my buttonhole as a guide, and just run my finger down. And I'm going to put a marker right here in this stitch. All right, so I have that in the middle. Now I'm going to count seven stitches on either side. I'll put a marker right there. This will be where the shamrocks will be placed. I will show you the shamrock stitch when I get there, but first we need to get there. So how we get there to the marked stitches is single crochet in each stitch across until we get to the marked stitch. When we get to the marked stitch, go ahead and place a single crochet in that marked stitch, single crochet in the marked stitch. Now we're going to crochet down the post of the marked stitch. We're going to crochet in these two loops, then go up the post of the next stitch. Okay, so I will be making my first shamrock leaf around the post of this double crochet that is below the single crochet row. So we start with a slip stitch, 
chain four, treble stitch, half double crochet stitch, treble stitch. So a treble stitch is yarn over twice, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then chain four, and a slip stitch. All right, there's our first shamrock leaf. It will lay this direction. Now we turn our work and expose these two loops right here. So we execute the same stitches. Slip stitch, chain four, treble, yarn over two times, Insert hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Now a half double crochet, and you'll have to shove your stitches. They will all fit, but you need to shove your stitches. A treble stitch, chain four, and then a slip stitch. All right, now let's turn our work again. We will be executing the third leaf around this post. So same stitches, slip stitch, chain four, treble, a half double crochet, treble stitch, chain four, and a slip stitch. All right, now we're not finished yet. Well, let's take a moment and look. How cute. Shape your little leaves, that looks really nice. So now we're not done. Let's insert our hook back into this loop. While we're holding this, we need to close our shamrock because it's open. This shamrock is open. It needs to be closed. So we go across to where and insert our hook in that previous slip stitch and then slip stitch that closed. And that closes our shamrock. Now chain six. and then slip stitch back down the chain and it makes a nice little stem. Slip stitch in the second chain from the hook and in each chain down, so that will be five slip stitches. There we go. And to keep the stem from continuing to float, you need to single crochet in the stitch that is almost buried, but that is behind the shamrock. It's this stitch right here. Single crochet in this stitch, and that secures the stem in a really nice way. Now let's continue to single crochet across the row until we meet the next marker. And then we will do another shamrock stitch. Now remember, you single crochet in the marked stitch. Now, slightly turn, grab hold of that post, and it's a slip stitch, chain four, treble, which is yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, a half double crochet around this post, a treble, a chain four, 
and a slip stitch. Started to make a single crochet there. All right, now turn your work again. Now you will be executing the second leaf. Shove that over. There are two loops right there. So slip stitch into this and under those two loops, chain four, treble, yarn over twice, insert hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now a half double crochet, treble, you have to shove those stitches aside. One, two, three, four, and slip stitch. Then you've made your second leaf. Now let's turn again, and we will go up this post. Now this is the post, this is the stitch that, that you secure the stem in. So let's go ahead and execute the slip stitch chain four, treble, half double crochet, slide those stitches over, treble, chain four, and a slip stitch. There we go. Now, remember, we need to close the bottom. We need to close the bottom of this shamrock. I'm going to give these stitches a shove and cover up that white area. There we go. That looks better. Looks like a shamrock. All right, let's insert our hook again. And come across and slip stitch in this beginning slip stitch where we slip stitch. Just put your hook right in there and slip stitch you. the shamrock closed. And that closes the shamrock. All right, now chain six. To make the stem. And slip stitch all the way back to the beginning. So slip stitch in the second chain from the hook and in each chain back. Now you have your stem is floating so you need to remember to go back in behind and single crochet in this stitch that is behind. And that secures that shamrock. Just a little bit of shaping and it's just fine. So we have two shamrocks. Now we need to make the third. Now, you can always pull up the contrasting color right before you execute the shamrock if you'd like. You don't have to have a whole row of green, but I find that to be easier and it doesn't really matter. I don't think anyone notices there's a whole row of green. Okay, so let's move on to the next shamrock stitch and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, so the shamrock round is finished. I have three floating shamrocks on my towel topper. I'm on the back side and I'm ready to pull up my first color of the rainbow colors. So how I do that is I need to make one more single crochet and then I need my red. This is Red Heart Super Saver Red. So I insert my hook in the top of the first single crochet I'm not going to cut my green yarn yet because I will be pulling it up later. And I will pull up the red, chain one, 
and single crochet with the red all the way around. So I want to show you what it's like to crochet behind the shamrock. There's the single crochet where we started going down the post, crocheting down the post. Then there is the single crochet where we secured the stem. So then we go behind the stem, single crochet, and then continue to single crochet in the same manner. Single crocheting behind the stem of the shamrock. Let me see, we are there again. I just single crocheted in that stitch that went around the post, lift back the stem, go under the stem, and single crochet. All right, I will meet you at the end. Let me speed up the camera. I am at the end. I need to slip stitch to the top of that single crochet. But first I'm going to cut this yarn. Orange is the next color. I've dropped the red. I'm inserting my hook in the top of that single crochet, tightening my threads down. And I'm going to pull up the orange. There we go, let's tighten that down. We can fix that a little tighter when we weave in our ends and then proceed to single crochet around. So I'm at the end of the orange. I will execute that last stitch, cut the orange. I like to leave a generous tail drop the orange, pull up the yellow at the join, join in the top of that first single crochet, tighten all that down, chain one single crochet in each stitch around. The crochet pattern can be found on Chrissy's OverTheMountainCrochet.com or the ad-free PDF can be purchased in my Ravelry or Etsy store. The links to that will be on Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet.com. I have a search bar at Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet.com. You can search in my on my website for any of the patterns that you have seen me crochet. Okay, I am ready to drop the yellow. End off with the yellow. I will cut the yellow and pull the green back up. Green is the next color in the rainbow. Now I'm not pulling this tight. Here we go. I'll tighten down my yellow. Chain one, single crochet in the joining stitch and in each stitch across or around. I'm at the end. I can now cut the green. We will pull the blue up at the join, drop the green, pull up the blue, these are such pretty colors. Chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. Okay, we are at the end. I will be cutting the blue. So let's pull up. I'm dropping the blue and pull up the violet. Chain one, single crochet in the joining stitch and in each stitch around. Let me speed up the camera. We are close to the end. Okay, last stitch and then join and end off and then weave in all of the ends and add 
a towel. How cute. So all that's left is sew on the button. Well, you kind of got to shape those shamrocks a little bit. Sew on a button. Weave in all of those ends. And then hang your towel on the hanger that's on the inside. Let's put that towel over the hanging loop. Did you enjoy making your floating shamrock towel topper? Did you make the rainbow edge or did you do a solid colored edge? Did you use lime green for your shamrocks? Let me know, I'd like to know. And I hope you'll come again soon. It was so good to have you.